everyone. Today I'm going to be showing you how to use a simple decal to control how it appears and blends between different materials. As you can see between the four setups, it is one decal, but one has this kind of emissive fog. And the top right is just a simple white. Bottom right has this normal and the bottom left is kind of teal and flat. And if I go on anywhere else, this is actually how it normally interacts with everything else. Today I'll be showing you how to set this up. Let's get into it. So here we are in a new project and I have gone ahead and created just some basic materials and some instances of those materials. So let me show you what I have. So for the decal is just a very simple circle texture. I gave it a tint control, a roughness control, and uh, the ability to change the normal if I so wish. So very simple decal here. And for the base material, it is as simple as plugging in the three things from Megascans. Right now that's what we're going to be using as our base. They just are diffuse, our roughness, which should be actually in green channel and our normal. So this is all very simple setup, but now we have our decal, right? And it is, you can place it on top of all these four different instances. We can now use this to control things a lot more effectively. So to do that, let's start with opening our material, whatever you want to have as your base material. And what we need to do is search in the detail panel for decal and you'll get decal response debuffer decals. So here you can control what is actually going to be taken from the decal itself and what do you want to have full control over. So by default, all of this stuff comes from the decal. As you can see, as of right now, it has the color, the normal, the roughness, it's all coming through onto this material. But if I say this to none and then hit apply, all of a sudden I don't have anything on this material. Now it affects still over here on this grid that still has the default, but these are all instances of the same. So it has nothing. So if I do, for example, color roughness and hit apply, you can see it is now completely flat normal here. It's completely flat. You can see this is the normal of the thing below. And then if I do the default and hit apply, now you can see the normal of the decal come through. So you can already play around with just this, but now we can use this to be far more advanced. So let's show you what happens when you set this to none and effectively nothing comes through and now you have full control over it. So for that, I'll make this larger and I'm going to right click and search debuffer and I'm going to grab a debuffer texture. So this is the information that you get from the actual decal. And if you select it under here, you can see you can get the base color, your world normal or in your roughness and you can pipe that through. And you also always get your alpha. Now this is important. So what I can do right away is I can lerp between the base color and whatever I want using the alpha. So I'm going to plug alpha into alpha, plug this into the base color. I'm going to put the original base color into B and I'm going to put the color of the decal into A. And now you could see it is coming through. It is taking this blue color and it's coming through. And again, if I take this off and I just put in the base color and I go through, it's gone. So now we're taking the information from the decal, the base color, and I can go ahead and open up my instance and I can change the color in this, right? And it affects everything. So that's pretty cool. So now we can bring in just the color and we have full control, but because we have full control, we don't even need to use this color by itself. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into my original decal. And in here, I'm not going to use this tint. I'm just going to plug this straight in. So now it's a white color. And in our setup here, what I can do is multiply it by a color parameter. I'm going to give it a default of white, plug this into the lerp. So now it's still white, but now I can go into our instances and for example, open up this guy and I'm going to change the decal tint. And now all of a sudden, I am changing the tint of the decal of only how it appears on this section. And I can do the same thing with the other ones. I can, if I want, I can just make it darker, right? I can just tone it down. So it's now not as strong onto this one. So you can have a lot of control for this. Now that is just the first one. So let's go ahead and now we go take this debuffer and let's do it for the other ones. So for that, I'm just going to duplicate this and I'm going to select roughness. And again, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to lerp it using the alpha. The original will go into B and the new one will go into A and I can get, I can plug this in here and then I can use the roughness of the base or what I'm going to do again is multiply it and then plug it in. And I'm going to call this another control decal roughness. And in fact, instead of a multiply, I'm going to do an add. So that way I can actually just offset it plus or minus depending on what I have below it. And the last one I'm going to do is for the normal. And for that, I'm going to select world normal. And again, same thing. I'm going to lerp it. 
or the alpha. In this case, I could take the original normal, plug this in, and you know what? I will do that, right? So now I will use the normal of the object based on where it is, but I wanna control kind of where, how I want things to be. So I'm actually going to lerp it again before this. So I'm going to lerp between the original and the new one, and I'm gonna just add a parameter, and I'm gonna say normal, I'll call it normal blend. I'll plug this in. So but by default, it will use the one on top, right? And if I put this at one, it will use the one on the bottom. So now if I hit apply, right? Notice you don't see anything. Of course, we can go in here, material here, normal blend. If I set this to one, let's see, we're getting the normal on this information. If I set it to zero, we're getting the original normal. And of course, I can blend between them. So now we have a combination of the two. Now, the, uh, the other thing I did notice is this is world normal. We kind of want tangent normal. So for that, if you grab a transform node, you can use that to convert between world space and tangent space. So this just makes sure that if it is in world space, because it does say world normal, it converts it to tangent space. So it should work correctly. But now we can go ahead and each one of these instances, I can go ahead and change how much I want this normal to affect it. So you can see now it's using the full strength of the normal from the decal. If I set it to zero, it'll use the normal from below. Of course, I'm going to that in between. And let's grab, for example, this metal. Right? This is going to be a very easy to tell. Bam. So you now have control. And again, it is per material base. The decal hasn't changed. The decal here on anything else is still this white. So you can have quite a lot of control with this. Now, one other thing you can do is just because you have world normal base color and roughness here doesn't mean you can't use this for other things. So what we can also do, I can grab this. And in this case, it doesn't matter which one I use. I can even use base color. I can use the alpha just for anything I want. So for example, I can use this in emissive. And if I say one zero, it becomes emissive, right? So here, what I can do now is grab ourselves a color. So a color parameter, I'm going to call this emissive, plug this into A. Our default is zero because we don't want it to be emissive, but I can now go into the instances and I can make them emissive. I can blend it between everything, right? So I can just use this as a mask for whatever I want and however I want to edit this. If I want, I can multiply this with a texture itself. So that way it only affects in certain areas. So if I want, I can go in here. So if I grab a tiling noise, I can just multiply it by the tiling noise. And now if I go into our instances and you can see it is now being masked by the decal and by the actual texture that is stuck to it. It is not following the decal because it is stuck to the texture itself. So you can do a lot of really cool things with this. You can control how you want it to appear. So if you have something that is like a liquid, you can have it look like it's soaked in by using the normal below for the material, or you can have it be on top, or you can play around with something like this. You can get some really interesting effects with this. So I hope you guys enjoyed it. Just remember in the detail panel, search for decal response, and then this is where you control what from the decal it just comes through and what you need to use the debuffer for. So you get as much control as you would like. But that is it for today. I hope you guys liked it. If you did, hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, and I'll see you guys next time. Take care. Bye.